Tonight we want to focus on spiritual warfare. So many facets of it exist. But we want to do an introductory edition of spiritual warfare. I want to give you some scriptures to begin with as we talk about spiritual warfare. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. Verse 10 through 12. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. And James chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Jude chapter it's only one chapter, so verse 3 of Jude. And First John 3, 8, and First Peter 2, and verse 11. All these scriptures, we want you to get them and write them down. First of all, introduction to spiritual warfare. What is warfare. Warfare is a state of intense hostility between two disagreeing authorities or entities. A state of intense hostility, a declaration of war, to authorities, communities, entities, governors, and authorities seeking to demonstrate superiority. Get this. It's a hostile environment by two opposing forces, entities, declaring war at each other, seeking to overcome, to defeat the other, and claiming victory. Of entities, governors, communities, authority, and disagreeing together. Now, Whereas the enemy is trying to intimidate us, the church, and make us submit to him, the church is bringing the devil under her feet. That submission to subjection, taking authority over to force him to stay where he belongs, under our feet. That's the church's mandate, mission, assignment. Therefore, war is war, and we are at war, not with each other, but against the powers of darkness. In warfare, you don't shoot with rubber bullets or water bullets. Warfare is the art of fighting, using weapons and armors to battle against the enemy, your opposition. It's a battle, a fight, within a war. Spiritual warfare is supernatural war, and there are different types of warfare. Propaganda warfare, psychological warfare, germ warfare, present day conventional war, and we could go on. 
or natural war, physical war, spiritual war. But we are in a war. Now, it's a state of hostility between two opposing kingdoms. It could be light and darkness, good and evil, God and the devil. Caught in between is mankind. Therefore, two opposing kingdoms who don't agree will never agree, can never agree, each seeking dominion over the other. Life and territories. To fight effectively, you and I must be born again from above, spiritual. For the weapons of our warfare, we soon find the scriptures unveiling, are not carnal, but are spiritual. Mighty and magnificent to the pulling down, dismantling, disrupting, throwdown of entities, of belief systems, thoughts, ideas. That's where warfare begins. Now let's look at a further definition of warfare. The object of the battle is the desire for each party to have dominion over a specific area, territory, and border. Object, person, or institution ultimately ruling over the other entity or party. Satan and his demons are fighting to ensure that God's plan for creating man, which is mainly for his pleasure and for his purpose, worship, is thwarted by afflicting man with all types of sickness, evil, diseases, death, brevity. The devil comes in many forms. But our purpose is to keep the devil in bondage, limited, restricted, and to cause his annihilation and his total devastation. His job is to keep man in bondage, making him disobey God and ultimately destroying man. We are to resist him. He can be resisted, must be resisted, and we'll show you how. Satan also thrives to dispose mankind of his inheritance and to give him hell rather than heaven. In John 10.10, 10, the Bible starts out by saying, the thief, which is a characteristic of the devil, comes to kill, rob, and to destroy. He's a thief. Lives, vision, marriage, purpose, destiny, you name it. But Jesus, on the contrary, says, But I am come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So the two causes are opposite. The line is drawn. The battle lines are clear. What God comes to do through Christ and what the devil comes to do is evil work. 
The church, which is the body of Christ, on the other hand, is fighting the devil to establish God's kingdom on earth and to make all kingdoms that is of God and his Christ. First John 3 and 8 says, The Son of God was manifested, revealed, exposed, to destroy all the works of the devil, to thwart it, bring it down, demolish it, destroy it. John 3 and 8. I gave you some scriptures. I will repeat them again as we look at spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, James 4, verses 1 through 7, Jude, which is only one chapter, one book, verse 3, emphasis, and 1 John 3 and 8, and 1 Peter 2 and 11. The main and principal scriptures we look at spiritual warfare is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole and not the old. The difference of emphasis and words. Put on the whole, the complete, the total armor of God. God. God has an armor hmm? that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the isms and schisms of the devil. For we wrestle as a church, the kingdom of God, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And we begin to list the four divisions and category that we war in and around and on. Let's look at them. Your Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 again, mm -hmm. principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world system and against four division and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Now we need to emphasize these three, four areas and this realm of the invisible, there are where the ruling angels, powers, structures, division exist above the earth realm. In that area, to come and go and introduce a level of warfare that we have never seen before. Paul had to spend many months and years in Ephesus to deal with the ruling powers of darkness and to raise up an army, a strong confrontational army, a strong formidable army, spiritual army that would contend with them. So, he wrote them letters addressing every area of their belief. He taught them about the great God and placement of the enemy. 
he taught them about the greatness of God and the placement of the church. He said, you have been lifted from where you are. Now, you are ruling with Christ. Where? In heavenly places. That's where the believer are. You are positioned, seated with Christ in rulership, in leadership, in headship. Above these principalities. Hmm? And then he went on to itemize the armors of the levels of spiritual warfare in specifically verse 12 of Ephesians 6. That gave him revelation. Now, spiritual warfare is not something for the church, prior department of the church. It is not something for the senior pastor in the church. Spiritual warfare is for every believer, young, old, senior, mature, teens, because we face spiritual warfare in all these dimensions. The church is his and the church is an invading army. Invasion. We must take over. We must defend and be on the offensive. We must know that we are licensed to pull down, violently dismantle, pull down, violently go against the enemy, not just to wound him, but to annihilate him, excommunicate him. We must penetrate, infiltrate, and saturate the powers of darkness with these weapons that God has given to us. First, we must be redeemed. First, we must be blood washed. Then, we must know that the devil is already defeated. We are fighting to maintain the battle. And therefore, with this mindset, we are now coming to a different understanding, our comprehension, our, our understanding is in line with Scripture. Powers of darkness are there. Before the church was born, Satan was already here. Jesus acknowledged the fact that he is the prince of the power of the air. It is us who have come to dethrone him. He is the prince of the power of the world. Listen. And even when the devil was offering his power, himself, his kingdom, Jesus defeated him by saying you own nothing. You're in charge of nothing. You are powerless. No kingdom belongs to you, but to Jesus. And Jesus defeated him. And we are going to do the same. And we must do the same. When we are born again into the kingdom of God, we are born ready to fight. Effective, efficient, armed, and dangerous. But Jesus used the scripture to defeat him at all time. And so he is being under our feet where he belongs. He played over Satan. He stole from Satan 
the certificate of occupancy of the earth. The document of authorization is to rule the earth. So that is very clear. We are here to prove him wrong according to scriptures that Jesus has won. I was made manifest that I might destroy the works of the devil. In Acts 1.8, we see that Jesus told the apostle, do not go anywhere until you be endued, be endued with power from an eye. Power over kingdoms, power over territories, power over all the powers of the wicked one, Satan. Something further on spiritual warfare. We must understand also, if we are to do effective warfare, the origin of spiritual warfare. Where did it begin? Where did it start? When did it start? And we could say, by whom? It is spiritual and not natural. Paul defines it clearly. Spiritual has to do with something that is supernatural. Not earthly, not natural, but it manifests itself in all these dimensions. Something beyond the ability of the natural. And then it becomes supernatural. Because the powers that are at work are stronger than the physical realm and dimension. It is something done in the realm of the spirit. The unseeable. The supernatural. The invisible. Yes. So, for you to be effective and relevant, you need to get into the spirit and to be able to do spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare exists. It's happening right around you, within you, outside of you, in your family, in your church, in your community, in your nation, in your region, in your village. You must know how Satan operates. Be not ignorant of his devices. Know how he operates. Know the wiles, the isms, and the schisms of the devil. Do you know them? Let's go on. If you know to do it, you must do it. We are told in the Bible that the seven sons of Sceva was the high priest over that area, but was not born again. When we stand against demons to cast them out, to undo their powers, we have wicked schemes, they're wicked schemes. In the name of Jesus, Paul preached. The demon looked at the seven boys and said, What an insult. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Gave them a trust, a trust, tore off their garments strip them down to bear and less than their essentials and sent them running because they did not know their authority in Christ Jesus. You and I cannot afford the same thing to happen. We must know who we are and whose we are and in whose power we fight. We say spiritual warfare is spiritual. Spiritual warfare is mighty. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 8 says, Power is mighty through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? 
No one uses bullet to fight a cockroach. Don't take it for granted at all. Second Corinthians 10, three says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, more than powerful. All might, hmm? true God, to so the pulling down, dismantling, exposing, hmm? unveiling, revealing, but they are mighty, through God, for the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination, bringing down violently all realms of imagination, all ideas, human philosophies. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. But notice, true God. Don't take up things on yourself. If the war was not mighty, it would not need mighty weapons. Mighty weapons are not of yourself and in yourselves. So tonight it is important that we pay attention, revisit some of these things and area. Spiritual warfare is a third thing. It is deadly. Hmm? 1 Corinthians 15, 32, and 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, Paul was describing the nature of the battle he fought in Ephesus over two long years to defeat these principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. He said, I die daily to self, to flesh, and his deeds, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride, pride of life. Ephesus, where we nearly lost it, he nearly lost his life. Paul says the experience was drastic. He fought with wild beast, spiritual beings. He could have said, died, but he nearly died. He risked his life because he knew that he had a better future in heaven after this world. He had the grace of God on his side. He had the blood of Jesus Christ. He had fire. Hallelujah. Because his God is a consuming fire. We will have to fight the enemy. The grace of God and a better future are still available for you and every believer to motivate us to engage in the good fight of faith. We are told by Paul, fight the good fight of faith. Mm. This is a faith fight. Yeah. It's a faith battle and not a flesh battle. So spiritual warfare is spiritual, it's mighty, it's deadly, and fort. It's practical, realistic, relevant, and evidence. Hmm? Ephesians 6.11's mention, wiles, tactics, plans. The devil has some plans, some wiles, some tactics. Some maneuvers, they are very serious. And he keeps at it every day. But God has already given us the strategy, the plan, and the plots of the enemy. Sometimes people talk about strategic level of spiritual warfare. Every level is strategic. If you miss one level, you are in trouble. That's why you need the entire armor, the whole, the complete armor of God. And get this quickly. 
the whole armor is Jesus Christ mm. from our head, which is the helmet, mm. to the breastplate of righteousness, which is our righteousness imputed through Christ Jesus. Okay. The belt of truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need our loins girded about with truth. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God and prayer. Above all, all manner of prayer. Hmm? It is important to say, no soldier is asked to take care of his back. That is so because his back, which is left exposed, should be taken care of by the other soldier behind him. So we shouldn't be dying by friendly crossfire. We shouldn't be dying by friendly bullets, by battling one another, advertising against one another. I have an intercessory church. I have a spiritual warfare church. I have a prison worship church. I have a deliverance church. So we are coming out of the church, exposing ourselves in middle air to find a prison worship church, to find a spiritual warfare church, to find a deliverance church. These are things that once we come into the kingdom of God and righteousness, all other things must manifest in our lives, in our lives. Be conscious of one thing. From the day you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, your battle begins. The battle begins. What battle? The battle of survival. The battle for life. Spiritual warfare. Wrestling with demons and devil. Hmm? In all areas, our flesh life. Hmm? our physical life, our spiritual life, in all area. What we see, the pride of life. What we hear, yes, it begins. Spiritual warfare is a fifth thing. It is a continuous battle. You don't start now and stop tomorrow because somebody wound you, hurt you, confuse you, fail you, lie to you. No, sir. It is a continuous warfare. Ephesians 6 and 18 admonishes us to pray always with all types of prayer, all kinds of prayer, and supplication. Where? In the spirit. Hallelujah. Not in the flesh. Not in the natural. We must get in the spirit. Hmm? Pray always. In all types of prayer. And supplication. In the spirit. Watching therefore unto. With all perseverance. And supplication. With all the saints. How many of you have seen that? How many of you have been listening to me in the spirit? Not tickling your ears and tantalizing your ears, but paying attention. These are concepts and principles that we must apply. And we don't warfare just at nights, just in the day. It's an ongoing thing to keep the devil out of your ears and the devil off of your back. Sometimes you fight to rest. The devil does not rest. He does not have holidays. He does not go on vacation. Mm -hmm. hmm? Well, your Jesus neither sleeps nor slumber. He does not take vacation. He does not wear pajamas. So be alive. Stay alive. Six, it is fierce. Have you ever seen two wrestlers? Have you ever seen two boxers battling to the deadly finish? And only one stand victorious? That's the kind of 
back. So Jude says, earnestly contend with every strength you have got within you for the faith. How do we earnestly contend for the faith? The Bible also says, where we read in Ephesians 6, that the enemy fires poison darts. That's why the whole armor must be applied. He shoots, and each dart is dipped in poison that gradually weakens you when we don't pray, when we don't meditate, when we don't read the scriptures, when we gossip, garbage in, garbage out, when we backbite, when we finger point, when we blame each other. The devil takes us by surprise. So we must know and remember, he comes to steal, to destroy, and to kill. I love to break it down this way. He loves to steal visions, dreams, marriages, families, ministries. He loves to steal businesses. He comes against your marriage in many different ways. You regret that you were ever married. He comes to destroy you ultimately. And he comes to kill dreams and visions. Hmm? He comes to destroy families, homes, the church, any way he can do it. Youth, with all types of things that he can do. So we must be prepared. Demons are very stubborn spirits. We call them disembodied spirit. Mean they were not given a body. But they are looking for somebody to host them. And every time they are cast out, they come back with seven more stronger. They find the house swept and clean. And there must be a replacement. If not, they are coming to take over in a worse form than before. Hmm? So they are looking for lodgings. We must keep them out. It's one thing to receive your deliverance. It's another thing to keep it. And many teach people how to be delivered, but they don't teach people how to maintain their deliverance. The church must do both and more. So, we looked at the origin of the spiritual warfare. Where did it begin? Between the devil and God. Between the devil and God's people. Kingdom, church, ministry. Can't catch God. Can't catch Quarko. You'll catch a shot. It must not be applied. To us. Therefore, spiritual warfare is important. The scope of the spiritual warfare, the origin of the spiritual warfare, hmm? the longevity of the spiritual warfare. But Revelation says, chapter 12, verse 7 through 12, tells us about the origin of of the warfare in heaven until Satan was given the right foot of fellowship and cast out, cast down. And you hear the cry, oh, inhabitants of the earth, the devil has come down. It tells us that warfare broke out in heaven and the dragon, that old dragon, Lucifer, Satan, made war against the loyal angels of the Lord. And he took a third of the angelic hosts with him. But Michael the archangel. One angel. Think of that. One angel. With Satan and his minions. Was no match for that one angel. God didn't even raise his hand. God don't get involved in that. And stoop to Satan's level. But Michael. 
who are minister, defeated him, brought him down, and the church can and will defeat him ultimately. Hmm? By the praise of the Lord, this verse did not conclude the final activity. It said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's the saints. And beloved, we are given that same passage. Ezekiel 28, verse 18 and 17, also gives hmm, a pictorial of how the devil was defeated. Hmm? 28, 13, and 17. Yes, that's the scripture. Being in the garden of God. Mm -hmm. hmm? In the place of God's power and dominion. Every he was. So yes. Adorned you. Ruby, topaz, and emerald. Chrysolite, homes, and jasper. Sapphire, porpoise, and beryl. On the day you were created, they were prepared. Mm -hmm. You were anointed as a guardian sheriff for so I ordained you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Telling us of Ezekiel 18, mm -hmm. showing us of God's power that he's already defeated. Mm -hmm. He was, he is, and futuristically is to come. Mm -hmm. Warfare is important. We go on. God is in warfare. He's a man of war. Ezekiel 15 verse 3 states, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. O Karaba Sotanda. Do you know God as a man of war? God fights to the finish and concludes all matters. When he dealt with Pharaoh, hmm? not so much as one of them remained. Exodus 18, uh, uh, 14, verse 28, first clause. God destroy Pharaoh and his many generals. Joshua 10 and 11. In Joshua 10 and 11, it says God used the first bomb against the Amorites, the, Un the Amorites and their allies in order to ensure total victory for the Israelites. God is doing that for the church today. Exodus 18 and 11, Jethro fight. He was the father-in-law of Moses, who was also a priest, received the report of what God did to the popular and the great. So the Bible says God brought down those who were proud mm -hmm. and arrogant, full of self, and God mm -hmm. defeated the enemies of Israel. All snake charmers, all those beginning and bringing thunder, all those who was raking havoc. But God says, God is above all African gods, and he defeated the African god. He will defeat the Jamaican gods, the Caribbean gods, the European gods, mm -hmm. the American gods. Is at work right now. They were defeated before and they will be defeated again. Oh, hallelujah. Wherever you are, whoever you are in Christ, know your position. So God is in warfare. God equips us for warfare. 
you, that you should be glad to know that God doesn't just fight for you. There's a time he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Or he says in Exodus 14, 14, I will fight for you. Mm -hmm. But there's a time God says, I want you to know I'm equipping you for warfare. Oh God, our God equips each warrior in whatever weapon God used to make him skillful in. He needs to deal decisively with the enemy in battle and win. God's weapons deal with the enemy. They are very reliable, consistent, and powerful. They have been tried through the ages without failing. We count on them today for consistent victory in Isaiah 31, 3 that says, in preparing the Israelite for battle against Egypt, God said to them, the Egyptians are men, not God. Not God. They are mere men, but God is God. For their horses are horses of flesh, not spirit. Huh? Why should you fear them? But God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. That's why your worship is so powerful. Fight better. Fight to win. Never give up. Psalm 144, 1, David says, For who is God except the Lord? And who is our rock except our God? God is my strength and power. He teaches my hands to fight ah, so that my arms can bend a bow of brands. And David also said in several places in the Bible, the Lord is my strength and my life. Whom shall I be afraid? God will not allow his apostles, disciples, saints to go alone. He will confront the enemy hmm? and the strong and evil he will bring down and bring to naught. Oh God, I feel a presence. I feel something over you. God not only trains us, our hands to fight, our fingers to fight, our hands to war. God is a powerful, God is a powerful statistician. God is a man of war. He has a different strategy for each battle. You'll never get confused. Jesus taught concerning warfare. Beloved, there's so many places to go. Hmm? The weapons of our warfare, the characteristics of those weapons. And why spiritual warfare at this time? God has a lot in store for you and I. I want to pause. I want to give you time to collect your thoughts. It's only an hour that we have been, and already it feels like it's several hours. Let's pause. Maybe we'll start again. But Brother Arthur. Yes, Bishop Brian. I know you are with me. Yes, give us a roll call. Who is with us? A sister Alea, there already. Yes, Judith sir. Sidar. Come on, tell us and those sister that you Peter, have. Sister Petagi is on as well. Kelly sister, Lars. she was one of the earliest ones to get on to. Yes, and Sister Chamberlain. You're in love warfare, you know. <laughs> That's why right, God will always do so more. Huh? Sister Tamira appeared. Okay, Sister appeared, yes. Yes, she's on as well. Um, on Facebook, I'm seeing, but I'm just going to use the comments to... Um, to tell you who's on. Sister Marlene Gardner Matthews is on. Yes. Sister Cameron, Pastor Maxine Riley down. Elder mm -hmm. Martin Daniels, Elder Angina Brady is on. And also um, Brother Andy is on. Oh, praise God. 
Yes, uh, Sister Sandra Brown is on. I also see Reverend Jen on, on, on the Facebook platform. Thank you. Yes, sir, she's on. Uh -huh. uh, Sister Georgia Matthews and Brother Audley Matthews is on. on Beautiful. Warriors. Warriors. Yes, sir. And Brother Arthur is on. <laughs> yes, amen. amen. <laughs> That's why we, we have gotten it. But there are some other people, persons are on. Jennifer, who else you have there with you? Dr. Maxine, uh, Sister Sandra Dobson Smith. I think Brother Arthur has covered okay. most of them. Yes, but, but I have um, something to say. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, so the enemy uses. Um, Wild. Wiles. And um, all manner of devices. Double I L E S. Yes. Wiles. What are they? Tricks. Tricks. Devices. Plans. Deception. Yes. And schemes. Yes. To get us out of the race. Yes. But that is exactly why the Holy Spirit helps us so yes. that we can discern what is happening. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit wants to keep us in the race. Hallelujah. The because, Bible says yes. the Holy Spirit even helps our weakness and empower us when we feel weak and beaten. He exchange God, exchange his power and strength for our weakness. Go ahead and finish. So that scripture that you gave us in Ephesians about standing our ground, stand firm then. It is to take your ground and take a position against your foe, the uh -huh. foe that is coming against you. Uh -huh. And we must avoid falling. Uh -uh. So stand firm, stand fast. Uh -huh. Do not allow the tricks of the enemy to get you to fall. And then the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to resist uh -huh. the evil one. So it's not like we are, we are there on our own. Powerless. Powerless. Defeated. Right. We have the ability to resist the evil one of all is uh, to resist spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. Yes. And these spiritual um, forces are, to let us just break it down, they are bad. They are vile. They are vicious. Mm -hmm. They are malvolent. They are malignant, like mm -hmm. a cancer. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us that we do not struggle against flesh and blood. Yes. We are wrestling. Right yes, now. yes. And that wrestling denotes a, a bitter struggle, mm -hmm. an intense conflict mm -hmm. against our foe. My but God. If the, more, the more intense the battle gets, is the more the Holy Spirit turns on the grace. And, Hallelujah. and the enablement for us to win the fight. Come on. Praise Sound God. Sound like you're preaching, sister. Yes, yes. Preach. My God. So let us put on the power of his might. My yes. God. The miracle working power that comes from the like a garment of the most high. Like my a cloak. God, my God. Like a robe. Oh, put it on. Yes, put it on so that we are able. So whatever we are commanded by the Holy Spirit to do. Sometimes we are told just to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Just to, sometimes we are, we are commanded to sing songs of praise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are commanded just to uh, uh, go up into high worship mm -hmm. by God. Sometimes we are told to either be quiet and meditate on the word. Silence. Of silence. Like Jericho. My God, a weapon of silence. So all types of uh, prayers we are, we are called upon to do mm -hmm. in that time. To Petition, make supplication, thanksgiving. In our warfare. High praise. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. So we, we must always seek to get heaven's perspective. Since the warfare is above us in the spiritual realm, we must seek to get heaven's perspective. Yes. If we if we if we get a carnal perspective or a natural perspective of, of things, we lose the battle. Yes. But when we seek heaven's perspective, my God, the Holy Spirit cannot be wrong. Mm. He's infallible. The Where Holy we Spirit. can be wrong, we can go wrong, we make mistakes. But when we rely on the Holy Spirit, his infallibility 
my God. Hallelujah. Helps us. Hallelujah. He cannot miss the mark. Yes. So if he tells you that the enemy is around the corner, he can never be wrong. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In all those realms, mm. principality, that's one. Powers, that's two. Rulers mm. of the darkness of this world and wicked evil spirits. Those realms are penetratable mm. through the powers of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Bible says, First Peter 5 verse 8, that the enemy is moving around like a devourer, seeking those whom he may devour. But God says, you and I, we are not ignorant of his devices. Mighty God, but we what? We launch the mm. attack on him. He comes to rob, to steal, to kill. But God has given us, you and I, power over all the power of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can display humility and we can also resist him. And the Bible says he will flee from you. Yes. So come on. So Sister Sandra and I had a discussion this week and she told me that somebody um, had a near-death experience and also coming out of the near-death experience she was saying that she saw into the realm of darkness in, into hell mm -hmm. and saw how satan satan's kingdom was well organized yes the demons can't uh can't slip up, slip up. They are organized into rank and file. Yes, and brethren, they don't break rank. And they don't break rank. Listen to me, brethren. We must get our act together. Mm -hmm. We, the Christians, must get our act together. Yes, If the enemy's kingdom is well organized, what about us? He learned organization from the king my of kings. God Almighty. He learned kingdom hey. from the king of kings. He's not more organized. He's yeah, not God. more well organized than us. And so we must come back to God. Come back to God. And be organized. Prayer. Praise. Worship. Yes. Submission. Obedience. Obedience. Commitment. Giving. Oh. Hmm? Character. Come on. Yes. Hold some character. Yes. I see Susan might be in online. Welcome. Um, I see Cameron. Alia online. Uh, Who? Cameron. Cameron. I, God Cameron. bless. Uh -huh. Sister Marie Cameron. You Sister said Marie. Marjorie. Yes. yes. Sister Marlene Matthews. Marlene Matthews is there. Come Jack on. Kenyon. Yes. New Jersey. All right. We are engaged My God. in spiritual warfare. Our mind on a personal level, self, our mind, fear. Hmm? against all fear. The devil wants to bring that on us, but the Lord Jesus Christ brings us victory. Hmm? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, we fight to maintain our victory. Even when you have gained some victory, you have to fight to maintain what you have gained. Keep it. This is because the enemy will come unawares back of you, trying to take back what you have already conquered. So fight. The Bible commends us. The Bible commissions us. And so and so and so um Ephesians uh speaks to us about uh with this in mind, be alert. Mm -hmm. And always keep on praying for all the saints. My Be God. alert. Yeah. Watch. Alert. Me. Vigilant. Watch me. Vigilant. Don't mess up. Open your eyes. Watch out for the enemy. Watch out to see what loophole he's trying to come into. Look out for him. Yes. You know? And then keep on praying for some of the saints. Mm -hmm. No. For all the, all the saints. That's why we must be at peace. My God. 
in our hearts, in our lives. Right. Ephesians says, be able to stand, mm -hmm. withstand, stand, and then stand. stand. stand Having yes. done all, stand. stand. The position of a warrior is stand, stand yes. be able to stand, mm -hmm. withstand, and then again, Stand. stand. Having done all, stand. stand. The position of a warrior. If you're not, don't get up again. Don't brush yourself, brush yourself up. Don't stay down and fight. That's why Ephesians is such a good book. Yes. A spiritual warfare. And Elder Daniel says, watch and pray. Yes, that gives the idea, the idea of alertness. Yes. Give me some readings. From the same. Thank you, Marjorie. Somebody else. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, which yes. is a helper. That comes from Lady Marlene Matthews. Yes, she is our Dr. helper. Riley says, Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Anne Marie, Sister Anne Marie says, Hallelujah. I hear the shout coming on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Brother Audrey says, My God. Glory to God. Yes, yes. Glory spiritual to God. warfare, Pastor Riley says spiritual warfare is no child's play. No. It's a place where great giants fall. And you're and a God. giant slayer. And we are the giant slayer. Come on. Slay your Goliaths. Oh, my We are God. in it together. Yes. And I had a comment in there that spiritual warfare is real. Very real. Oh, Your hallelujah. family preservation. Your mind, your body, yes. your spirit, yes. your finances, your children, mm -hmm. your husband right now, yes. your wife, yes. your mother, your mm -hmm. father. We are in a warfare. Yes. Hmm? Stand, saints. Stand. And having done all, stand. Able to stand. Withstand. Stand. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And again, I say, stand fast. Mm -hmm. This bit nice tonight. Yes. Any other comments? Pastor Maxine Riley says, the devil Satan is our arch, arch enemy. Mm -hmm. arch. And we must arch. know him. Yes. We must know him. Because he hates God, our father. Yes. First. Yes. So he will not let up on God's children. Mm-hmm. But thank God we have got the power and the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, we have got the power yes. in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, yes. we shall not be defeated. We have got the power. That's an old song we used to sing in yes. Love and Faith. We need to pull out some songs again. Yes, Elder Angina is online. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Oh, praise God. For Gina, her family. And when you see Lady Angina, that means Elder George is right next door, right? Yes, he can't do without her. <laughs> He's right there. Come on, George. Elder George is there. Good night. Good night. God bless you. <laughs> oh, the word of the Lord is sweet. Hallelujah. That's about it, Bishop. Well, thanks be to God. We thank God for our uh, Arthur. Yeah who is daily and nightly preparing us to receive God's word yeah. and to engage in the act um, of war, warfare in a different level, yeah. ground level warfare, hmm? spiritual level warfare. Ah, Sister Debbie Roden is, is watching. Yes. Sister Sandra Brown says Revelation 12 shows us how the saints will win the enemy. Yes. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Ah. And Elder Gray, Elder Andy Gray, we are authorized to pull down the yes. strongholds. Yes. Ah. Uh, Elder Bailey says, we got that right. We have that right. Yes. Yes. Pull down stronghold. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. Yes. The word is being received yes. and utilized. We are not at the same level where we were before. Mm? Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
be to God. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you're taking it in. Something is happening. So ground level warfare, it is at this level where we fight to deliver somebody who has been bound, kept down. Ground level warfare is where we fight for others. That's one. This level that is open to every believer, having been delivered at the personal level. So we have personal level warfare. We get rid of the demons out of you. Ground level warfare. We take on the whole host of hell. And at this level, Isaiah 49, verse 24 and 26, says there are some people who are lawful captives and are taken prey by the enemy. But we overcome all instances that the devil fights against us. Then there is governmental level. At this level, you fight against satanic powers that are behind thrones. Come on, and there are rulers to every throne that try to dictate and control the affairs of men. Throne is a seat of power that demons reside over, but God is our strength. And then there is cosmic level warfare. This is the highest level and most difficult level in spiritual warfare. It is not for babies. It is a powerful dimension in God. It's not for the unskilled. At this level, we are dealing with principalities, like Ephesians 6 says, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual hosts of hell, Ephesians 6, verse 12. I think we have done a good night tonight. I think we can rest for now. And do part two another night. We war on earth. We war in the water, water spirit. And we war in the heavenlies, according to. Uh, when we get back, we'll touch more on that. Let us never teach on something and not actualize it. Make it relevant and real in our lives. Let's pray. Say with me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decree and declare, open your microphone, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have victory. We have victory. And we declare tonight, and we declare tonight, over our families, over our families, over our homes, that the blood of Jesus gives us victory. Amen. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. We disarm you. We disarm you. We defeat you. We defeat you. We demolish you. No malice. No entrance. No powers of darkness. No powers of darkness shall prevail against us. But in the name of Jesus. But in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth. Every demon is bowed. Every demon is bowed. Every throne is brought down. Every throne is brought down. Every ruler spirit is demolished. Is demolished. We expel you. We pull you down. We demolish you. We demolish you. We demolish you. And we render you ineffective. And we will render you in Jesus' name. 
Oh, glory to God. Tonight, we are overcomers. Jesus. Our house is covered. Amen. Our children are covered. Amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. And we decree we are free from Amen. Satan assaults. Amen. And we demonstrate victory now in Jesus' name. We're going to let you over early to meditate, to do your own prayer. Do your own decorations of warfare. Read your own scripture. Go over your notes. And everything that you have heard us say and more, decree and declare. You are a spiritual legislator. You are called to legislate in the heavens. Ah, make laws, pass laws, declare a thing, and it shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over you. We render every demons and devil defeated. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. The Lord bless you. Bless you, Brother Arthur. Let's raise our hands for the benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his name and face to shine upon you. The Lord grant you his grace and his peace. Shalom be upon you. Nothing missing, nothing absent, nothing broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you once again. Amen. Amen.